Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the periodic table and how it even relates to the subatomic particles. So first, turn to your next page in your notes and follow along with me. First thing we're going to do, we're going to draw a square or kind of a rectangle shape. And then, if you look at a periodic table, you're going to see a bunch of these squares. We also call them tiles. So in this tile, you'll notice the big letters, usually one capital, and then sometimes it also comes with a lowercase. So every time you see a capital letter, that is a new element. And this letter, these symbols, either a capital and a lowercase or just one capital, this is going to be called the symbol of that element. Now at the very bottom, you will see the name of the element. Now, if you look at the top, think about someone standing on a scale. So first, we want to know their ID, right? And then if they're standing on a scale, what are they going to, what's going to tell us? This is going to be our mass. So think about that when you're looking at these tiles, because at the top is going to be what? This is going to be basically our ID, which is also the atomic number. Every element has a different atomic number. Hmm, our ID. If you watched the last video, you remember our ID is related to one type of subatomic particle. Do you remember what that is? It's going to be our protons. So our atomic number is the same number of protons that silicon has in an atom. Now the bottom number I said was gonna be the mass. So if you look at a periodic table, you will see the mass for silicon is 28.085. And again, this is the atomic mass, or we just call it mass for short. Now that is how you would look for the information on one of the periodic table tiles, or the squares, for each of the elements. Now, what about the other subatomic particles? How are we going to figure out what, how, how many electrons and neutrons silicon has? Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Go ahead and go to the next page. And remember, if I have it, you have it. Right along with me. And now we have our eight man to the rescue. Okay, so I like to visualize. So over here, I'm also going to draw <laughs> close enough, right? I know I'm kind of an amazing artist. All right, that's my eight man. Okay, so now how is this going to help us with the periodic table? Great question. Well, our A, if you look back on your notes, the first A is our atomic number. And we already said that's like the ID. So that is equal to our number of protons. And in eighth grade, we talk, talk about neutral atoms which means that the charge, overall charge, is neutral. So this is going to follow that rule. So our atomic number is going to be equal to our protons, which is also equal to our, what subatomic particle is this? Electrons. Now, down here, what number haven't we used from the tile notes? This is going to be our mass minus our atomic number, we just bring down that number, is going to be equal to, last but not least, our neutrons. So now if we look at silicon, silicon's atomic number was what? 14. So how many protons does it have? 14. How many electrons does it have? 14. Now, our mass was 28.085. Remember, you don't have to write this. But 
When we're looking for mass, we're looking for a whole number. So we need to round. So we're going to look at the number right after and see if it's going to raise or stay the, the same. So the rule is five or more, raise a score. Four or less, get rid of the rest. So what is this number right after the decimal? Four or less, get rid of the rest. So our mass for silicon is going to be 28. And what was our atomic number again? 14. How many neutrons does silicon have? This one was a little easy. These are not always going to be equal, but sometimes it works out that way. And that is how you figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons each atom has using the periodic table. So whenever you're in doubt, just remember, dun-dun-dun, eight man to the rescue. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.